sticking with us here on Good Morning San Diego. You know, tomorrow is the day designated to reflect on the life and legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. And someone who saw the civil rights movement unfold as, as he was growing up in Detroit is Michael Brunker. Michael Brunker is known as a San Diego community mover and shaker, and he joins us live right now via Zoom to talk about Martin Luther King Jr. and the organization that he is now a part of called the Third Option City. Michael Brunker, so good to see you. How are you? It's good, and good morning. Good, Always good to see you. Wow, bring us up to speed, my gosh. It's been a while since we last chatted. I, I know you spent couple of decades with the YMCA. You've now retired from there. You've moved into a new role as CEO with the Third Option City, which I understand is working to really unite the country, something that perhaps uh, Martin, Lu Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, was very much in, li in line with. I mean, his, you know, uniting people, fighting for equality. Uh, talk to us about Third Option City. Well, I'll tell you, and Liz, I want to thank you for all the support you gave me and the YMCA of San Diego County during the 23 years I spent there. And, and I never really had retirement on my mind until I was approached by Pastor Miles McPherson. Many of you know him from the Rock Church. And he's written two books. The first was called Do Something. And the second recently came out called The Third Option City. And it's all about, it, you know, the bottom line, it's all about trying to unite the country one city at a time by developing loving relationships, honoring our similarities, celebrating our uniqueness, by providing a journey of self-discovery and by forming truth-telling partnerships. And I believe that's what Dr. King did throughout his walk on this earth. And so it's so consistent. I felt it more of a calling. So retired from the Y on January 4th to refire with Miles in the third option city. Wow, this is great. Well, you know, what do you think of the timing of all of this in terms of, you know, bringing this information and this uh, mission, if you will, this strategy to light right now? Do you think there's never been a more important time for people to participate in this? One of the things I always appreciate about Dr. King, and we've heard so much about him, but probably as we talk about him, and, and first off, I need to salute KUSI for all you've done to commemorate Dr. King. And I just watched Dave Scott's presentation. I highly recommend put that link online somewhere because everybody needs to see that history. The tough thing right now is the context of when King was there. When when you look at, he was born 1929, you know, and, 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 and we talked about how his name wasn't Martin Luther King at the time, it was Michael King, which I, I relate to as my namesake as well. But all the things that he did, I wasn't born until 52 and at that time, he was 23 years old. I was 15 mm -hmm. years old when he was assassinated in 1968. That came the, the spring after the summer prior in Detroit, where we had one of the worst riots in the history of this country. And Liz, when you look at it, have things really changed? You know, the bottom line is they haven't. And, and I know that of all the things we've heard about the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and all the things he did say, I truly believe he defined when I talk about the general task of leadership is the process of bringing new and generally unwelcome realities to an individual group organization and society. But there's an and proposition in between in terms of helping them adapt successfully to it. These tough times call for all of us to serve downstream in support of the kids and families of this country's most critical communities. And that's what King did with everything he did with his head, his heart, his hands, and his habits to serve others before self. And that's, you know, he truly spent his having doing good on earth. And now the time now is to fall in love with those similarities that define our humanity as we're so divided and we see that every day. Yeah, and you know, we continue to be divided on, on many different levels, as, as you know more than I do, not just culturally, but politically. I mean, and the list goes on and on. Where do people begin? How do people begin? You and I begin to fall in love with these similarities, right? That you say define our humanity. Where do we start? It, and it's not simple. I, I think the first thing is to understand is if we're truly gonna make an impact and if you really look at the life and legacy of, of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., he got to the table with the leaders. You know, he had conversations with them in a way that it's not a, you know, I win, you lose paradigm. And that's what the third option city strategy is all about. 
I know Miles will be on tomorrow morning, but mm -hmm. the bottom line is that it's how can we bring people together to talk, how it's not us against them, but how we can have a win-win proposition and make that happen in spite of the madness that's gone on all around us right now. As I looked at what unfolded in Washington, D.C. last week, and here I'm stepping into this new position as CEO of the third option city, you know, we have to deal with those folks too. You know, we have to find a way to talk to them and address their issues and concerns and bring everybody together as we move forward. Otherwise, King also said, if we don't learn to live together as brothers, we will perish together as fools. And, and so uh, he said a lot of things that were real important. A lot of people question, you know, at the time when he was leading the movement, you know, about his peaceful strategy, but he truly believed that we had before us a glorious opportunity to inject a new dimension of love into the veins of our civilization and the end is reconciliation, the end is redemption, the end is the creation of the beloved community. And you do that by working through understanding that we mm -hmm. all share many things in common. Yeah, and I think by and large, most people want that. Michael Brunker, so great to have you on. Uh, it's good to see you, my friend. Good to see your face. I continue to follow you on social media. Thank you for sharing with us what the strategy uh, is all about with the third option city. And yes, you're right. I believe we do have Pastor Milo McPherson on the show tomorrow morning. So that will be a treat as well. And take care. We will talk soon. And, and Liz, if I could thank you once again at KUSI, you had Dee Sanford on this, this morning. Oh, yeah. She's the forever chairperson of the YMCA of San Diego County, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Human Dignity Award breakfast, where, you know, uh, Dr. Uh, Wilma Wooten was the recipient of the Human Dignity Award this year. And, and, and Assembly Member Shirley Weber just gave a magnificent presentation. But also, you look at all the other things that are happening through the community here in San Diego, giving honor and tribute to Dr. King, the San Diego Union Tribune had a Great feature on the front page by Jeff McDonald of that history. The YMCA, the All People's uh, Breakfast is coming up on Monday. The parade that would have been today. We I all would have been out at the parade that was led by the late uh, uh, Dr. Robert Matthews, who did that religiously. Mm -hmm. He was called to be with the Lord this past year. And he was one of three past recipients of the YMCA Human Dignity Award. Ambrose Brodus, Dr. Matthews, and the Reverend George Walker Smith. All of these folks gave a life to a commitment of King but then again, parents, if I have one thing I can suggest right now, go to YouTube. It's the amazing thing about social media right now hmm. is you can go on YouTube and look at any speech that Dr. King did. Sit down with your children. Look at it yourself to really hear and understand what that great man was all about. Thank you so much for that advice. Michael Brunker, again, great to see you. We'll talk soon. Yeah.